In today's video, we're going to be describing the rest of the version 2 elements from Pro and X theme. So once we go ahead and navigate to elements, we can go ahead and drop down to where we left off. We'll go to image. And from there, we get a default gray square to let us know that we, can, we don't have anything there. We can apply a preset, just as we discussed yesterday. And we can also go ahead and set up a width, max width, background colors, and interactions. Let's go ahead and add an image first. Okay, so we have our image, and it's taking up the entire um, width and height of the image. So we, if we do 100%, you'll see that it's still the width and height. We can do certain pixels, and we can also do certain percentages. So you have those um, different options there. Let's do auto. We have the background color, so we'll choose red for now. And I'll show you why we don't see that in just a second. We can choose interaction color, so we can choose this to be black. Let's see, the retina and dimensions. If we chose to turn off retina, this makes the image full width. And there's no retina. So retina will make it um, twice as small just to make it so that it's retina friendly for devices that have screens that are retina, such as phones and mobile devices, your laptops, things like that. So if you want the image to be full width and it's not, you can go ahead and uncheck that. You can also link the image to a specific um, page or uh, email or your phone number. So you can choose those down here in the link. And you can also add your alt text. You can add alt text right there. Let's go ahead down to margin. So if we do with margin, we go ahead and we'll enable this to be 1 EM around and you can see it's got a little bit of a, a margin around that. If we go back and we do the padding, and we do that to be 1 EM, you can see that background color that we finally added earlier is now showing because we added the padding around it. So when we hover over top of this, it's black just as we have in our settings, red and then black. Let's see. We have the border, so we can go ahead and add a 10 pixel border, and we'll make this black right here. So you can think of it as a good way to essentially do a double border on your um, on your image. Let's do two 10 pixels. So you can see we have a double border here, and it's a cool way to um, do an outline. So if we wanted to do an outline here we can do something like that that's a nice little framed in image so that's a little bit of a hack for the outer border radius we can go ahead and change those as well and then we have the inner border radius for the image outers for the actual border inner is for the image so you can see we can do something like that the box shadow Go ahead and add a box shadow here. So you can see that we have that. And then those are all the settings for, for the images. Now, if you're trying to center an image, let's go ahead and make this smaller. We want to center this image inside of the column. So the, what I've been doing lately is go over to customize and type in center hyphen list, and that will automatically center the image. If you notice when you go back to that and you go to your margins, and let's say you wanna go and add a margin to the bottom, you can add your bottom margin, but it shifts it back over here. So what we need to do is type in auto for the left and right. And then we have a image that is centered, but with a one, let's just do a 20 pixel margin on the bottom. So you can see that on the bottom there. Okay, so let's go ahead, and that's basically everything for the image. Let's move on to the next one, which is a line. So basically these are dividers that you can add to your content. You can have it horizontal or vertical. 
You can have um, the width of it be a pixel or a percentage right here, and your other options are there as well. So if you want it to be 50%, you can do that. Or if you want it to be 50 pixels, you can do that. Let's do percent. And you can do the max width as well. The size of it's gonna be the thickness. So you can add and change those options. Color style, if you wanted to go ahead and add some color to it. And you could have it da dotted, dashed, double, ridge, all of those different options. And you can increase the size just to see what those different ones are. Margins are the same, so add a margin all around the, the line. And you can also do a border radius. So if you wanted to have the line be a little rounded, you can do that as well. Box shadow is the same. We can add a box shadow just as we have been normally. You can go ahead and add that. Offset it if you need to. So those are the different options for applying a line. And a lot of you may know that you can actually hand code a line by doing the greater than sign HR um, forward slash less than sign. You can do that as well. That's hand coded. All right, let's move on to the next one. And that is the map element. So for here, the map element, we're going to go ahead and there's two different options. You can embed a map. So you can go to maps.google.com and you can search your map, grab a place, share, embed, copy that and paste it in. So that way you have your map right there. Or you can use the Google Maps. So right here, you're going to need an API key which you can, uh, I'll put a link down in the description to go ahead and how to get an API key. But basically you have to go to Google's website, um, register your site on there and then go ahead and they'll give you a key for your project. From there you can go ahead and enter your longitude and latitude, your zoom controls and your drag controls. So you can zoom in or drag it around just so you can um, check out other places around there. And then your zoom level. Normally it's around 15 is what I would suggest. And then if you have any specific uh, map styles that you've created, you can go ahead and do and apply those there inside the JSON file. You can go ahead and visit this link here to create a style. Um, so you can actually turn off roads, landmarks, change the different colors. And then once you're done, you can hit finish and it'll give you all of this. And all you have to do is just copy and paste that inside of here, and it'll make your map look just like that. Let's see. From the frame section of the map, you can allow yours to be aspect ratio, fixed height. So if you want it to be, um, you know, 100 pixels tall or 500 pixels tall, whatever you want it to be, change your background colors of the map. Um, you can add your margins, your borders, your radius. Uh, and your padding as well as the box shadow and all of those settings as well. You can also apply width. So if you want your map to only be 50% width, you can do that as well. Okay. And you also have the customized section with the ID, the class, and the inline CSS. All right, let's go on to navigation collapsed. Now, it's basically it's basically the same as what we've been mentioning before so the navigation collapse it just lists out a navigation right here uh, you can add your menus here if you want they have the sample menus you can choose from and then you have all of your features that you can change so right now this is the menu this is the overall menu look if we go and we choose top links the, from there, it's going to take and control all of these top links right here. It's not going to control any of these sublinks. So from the top links, we can change the base font size, uh, the width and the height, so that it doesn't have to be 100%. And then we can do uh, the background as well. So we can change the backgrounds of them, and then the interaction colors. 
So you can see that when you over, hover over top of them, they change colors. Uh, we could do columns or flat or columns or uh, the rows. You pretty much want to stick the rows with this. You can reverse the layout so you can have them reversed. Uh, let's go over to text and change this to white real quick. Okay, so we have those, and then we have the margins for each one. So if we wanted there to be a bottom margin of one so that we can space them out like this, we can do that as well. We can add padding. Right now it's a 0.75 around the entire thing. So we can add that to be two, and it makes it a bigger padding. And we can also make it smaller. We have borders, uh, border radiuses. So you can do something like those. Uh, the box shadow for each individual one, and the text setup. So right now we have text turned on, and we have the primary text turned on. The secondary text can be turned on, and then what you'll do is inside of your WordPress menus, you're going to go ahead and navigate to your appearance and menus. And you're going to go ahead, let's create a new menu, a new menu. And then once we want to add the secondary um, text, you can go to screen options and turn on description. There it is. This is our this is our secondary text right there. So if we go there, go back here, we save this page. Let's refresh this and we'll go ahead and see what's what we can do with this. Okay, once this is loaded, go here. We're going to change our menu to main, top links, and let's go ahead to our text. And then for our secondary text, we can change that color. So as you can see, we have our secondary text below our primary text. We can go ahead and change all of those um, text formats using the primary text format that we're used to with all of our elements the font family the weight the size the letter spacing uh, we can do the line heights and as well as the font styles so italic left center right aligned all of those text decoration transforms all of those different options text colors change those text shadow and then we can get into our secondary text format, which has all of the same settings as above. We can turn on our graphic setup. So inside of our graphic setup, we have the icons and the, and the self-submitted images. So we can do that. If we go back to our main menu, you'll see that there's a spot here for icons right here. So you can go ahead and change those here. Primary is what it looks like without being hovered over. Secondary is what it looks like when you do hover over top of it. You can also paste in your um, self-submitted images here the whole link to the URL and then you have to put the image width up the image width and height of the image that you upload to it so that's you have to go ahead and add those as well let's see let's go to the graphic section and make those white so that you can see that there it is so we have the same settings as before we have the graphic margin the interaction, uh, the different icons that you can choose on, underneath of the menu, uh, borders, radiuses, um, all of the different options that we're used to with all of the other icons. Then you have your sub indicator margin. So your sub indicator is when you have a drop down menu, it's going to be the little uh, icon on the right hand side. Let's go ahead and add one just so that we can show you what it would look like. Let's save this and we'll refresh. Okay, so we you can see over here on the right hand side we have this little down arrow. Let's go ahead and change this. So 
the sub indicator setup is turned on. We have this to be white on normal, so you can see that now. And we'll make a black one hover. So you can see those. And then you can also change the font size of it here as well. You have the margins and then text shadow options for those. And then as we mentioned before with the buttons, you have the primary particle setups so that you can add different animations uh, to, your, to your menus. Just like we were uh, in the last video with all of the buttons. Okay, so we have sublinks. Sublinks allows us to go ahead and style all of these sublinks in our submenus. So we can increase that here. We can work with the background. I always seem to choose black. We can work with the background here, make it whatever color you want it to be. Uh, and it has all of the same settings as the primary, but these are just going to all apply to the submenu. Go ahead and change the text color. Basically, be whatever we want. We can turn on graphics as well and have those all appear here. When they click, you have the graphic there as well. Let's see. And then we also have the customize, which is the ID, the class, and the element CSS right here. And hide during breakpoints. All of those options are available for that as well. Okay, let's go to our next one. Let's do nav drop down. And then we're also going to cut touch base with nav inline. So let's go ahead and do that. So the nav drop down, basically when you click the icon, it has a drop down menu. This is very similar to the nav modal, I'm sorry, to the content modal that we use. I'm sorry, content drop down that we used. So you can go here, assign a menu. Your toggle has all of those settings like a button does has all the padding, the borders. Um, you can remove the graphic and have text only or vice versa. And then you have your settings for dropdown. So when you click on your dropdown, you can go ahead and apply all of these settings to the dropdown here themselves, just as though we were doing it earlier inside of the uh, navigation collapsed. You can see all of those different settings here. If you want to go ahead and customize all of the links, that'll be underneath of the links section. You can go ahead and take those, change the text colors, apply all of the formatting that you want to those. And then we also have the, um, like I said, once you apply it to the links, it applies to all the links. So even those in sub menus will get applied to the same formatting just because you can't you can't differentiate between sub menu and parent menu on the um, on this element itself okay so let's go ahead and we're gonna get rid of this one and the navigation inline is the same exact thing except it's all basically like your like your like your style of your normal navigation that you have on all of your websites. Now we'll go ahead and switch this over to the main menu. Uh, Self-aligned stretch. Let's go ahead and add a background to these top links first, just so you can see what's going on. And then we're gonna go ahead and add. All right, let's go ahead and change our settings. So we have self-aligned stretch. We have different um, customizations that we can go ahead and add to the to the actual element itself. Let's see, one sec. Okay, so. Once we've gone ahead and added that, we have that, we have our base font size, we can go ahead and increase or decrease that. We can do a line self, so it's going to be each one of these, uh, center, end, stretch, things of that nature. And you'll really see this 
once we go underneath the design and you can see those settings get changed there we have the margins for each of these items itself that we can go ahead and change there and then we have the self flex so we can do fill space equally where it's going to take these and spread them apart no shrink uh, fill space all of those options are available there and you can learn more about the flex options inside of the header flex video that we have on YouTube as well the flex layout we have the two different options column and row and we can also reverse the layout so that they are completely backwards let's go ahead and turn that off horizontal space around we can do space between we can do all of them in the center all of them on the end things of that nature and then for the vertical we can do center stretch and start that's up and down okay let's go over to the top links top links is the same settings as before it's going to go ahead and just do all of these up here and you see all those settings here we won't have to go over those too much because we already went over those with the last two elements we also have the drop down that we can format so we have this drop down right here that we can go ahead and format to this text color text background the margins things of that nature let's go to change this to a different color there we go the borders same 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 thing here as well as the radius you can actually choose to do those and the fun thing with this is if you wanted to go ahead and make the top flat and then the bottom be rounded you can do that as well so it kind of blends in with it just a little bit okay so we have that and we also have the sub links that you can change so each of the links themselves will go ahead and you can change those let's see so let's change this to white and we've got a white text here change that to red and we've got a red text here when we hover all of those options are available let's go ahead and navigate over to the navigation modal this is the same thing as what we were mentioning earlier with the content modal except now there's just going to be a navigation in there so we can go ahead and choose our main menu choose the base font size open this up and we have all of our uh, navigation modal right here the toggle is the same thing as the content modal so you can make all of those changes here and then you can also go ahead and design all of your modal settings which is a great feature and then you can go ahead and design all of your your links but there is a fair warning the modal does not play nice with menus that have a drop down so if you have sub menu links inside of your main menu and you're using the modal I would advise against that because it does not allow you to have drop down menus you cannot have a drop down menu here I learned that the hard way so make sure you're using one of the other ones there okay let's see navigate over to the next one which is quote so for the quote this is basically if you wanted to do a testimonial you can use this here or if you're quoting part of the paragraph you can put that there so let's go ahead and style one up real nice you have your quote here you can edit the text and then you have the citation so who is saying this or where it's coming from or something like that you have the base font size and the width so you can choose your width right here <coughs> you can go ahead and choose your width there and you'll see it's right there just like that so it's 75 percent you could do 300 pixels something like that and then you have your margin as well for in the padding you can change the border so we will add a left border that's solid make this five pixels and we'll make this black let's go ahead and we can even add a border radius to that if we want to 
the box shadow we can add that it'll be a box shadow around the entire quote text format change all of those base font size and then we also have uh, the letter spacing for everything for that as well for the marks we can go ahead and apply a mark now there's a lot of different options for here um, and we're gonna go through them all right here so the marks is allows you to um, have graphic particles so you can turn them on or off so you can so you can achieve um, whatever look you're looking to get with that so let's go ahead and just add an example so let's go ahead and choose row and we're going to choose open mark align and we're going to align the center we're going to turn on the graphic let's go ahead and turn off the quote border just for now so the center is going to be start so top middle or bottom so let's go center and we'll do center here as well for the closing let's go ahead and make the font size 3 for this and then for the closing we'll do the same thing 3 so that we have them on both sides you can select whichever icon you want to put here it doesn't have to be quotes so we can also choose column if we want it to be top and bottom we can have those options there we can make it so that it's just one and have that we can switch it to the right switch it to the left we can do start center end so there's a lot of different options that you can choose for adding the icon next to it or if you want to add the icon underneath of it we can do that let's go ahead and switch this back to a quote And we'll go ahead and start this. You can put this at the column so it'll be left, center, or right. All of those different options are available. If you want to get fancy with it, you can essentially make this huge. And then we can go ahead and make the quote margin left negative 3. I'm sorry, hold on one second. Content text. Text margin. I had this earlier. Let's see. And then for the citation, you can go ahead and choose it if you wanted to before or after. Choose a different background color for that as well. You can do the flex layout so it's column or row. Um, basically, you're not going to see anything if you choose the different ones. Uh, the margins, paddings, things of that nature. So you can actually go ahead and make it so that it's negative margin, negative left. So you can actually go ahead and make it come over to the left a little bit. You can also do left, center, and right aligned and justified. And then you have your border radius, the shadows, the text formats, all of those different ones. And you can also enable an icon as well if you want to go ahead and enable that just so that you can add a little bit of flair to it. Search drop-down. So the search drop-down is basically when you click on this, you'll have a little drop-down for your search bar and you can type in your search and you can go ahead and have those um, the search appear on, on your website. Basically, you would migrate down to the graphic section and you can go to turn on your own font awesome icon and search for search. I'm not why this is I'm not sure why this is a default. Why they would have a, a burger menu like that when it's a search, so it should clearly be a search icon. But maybe I'm wrong. Let me know. So you can have that and you can change your different stuff here. Let's go ahead and work on designing some of the, um, the order. 
So for the search, we have the drop down where we can apply all of our different search settings there, but underneath of the search is where it gets fun. So we can have the width of the search here. So let's go to 50%. And it's 50% of the drop down space. Not this much space, but 50% of the drop down space. We have the height as auto. The background of the search, we can change that. And the placeholder, we can change that. Type to search. Right there. We also have input placement, submit placement, and clear placement. So let's type in some searching uh, search here. So as you can see, we have the, in, the submit placement right here, which is the magnifying glass. We have the input placement here, which is where you're actually going to input your text. And then we have the clear placement, which is the big X that gets rid of the text. Over here on the left, you can actually change the settings of which ones they want to appear first. So if you want your input first, your submit second, and your clear placement third, you can do that. You can also have your clear placement first, uh, your input second, and your submit third. So you can do something like that. So there's different ways if you want to have your different elements appear in a certain order inside of your search dropdown. And then we have all of your settings down here for um, input. So up here is where I would say navigate. You have your input here. So you can input all your margins, things of that nature. If you want your um, background to be a certain color, you can do that. Then you have your, let's go and put input text. We'll change that. Okay. So we have that, we have the submit set up. We can do the, the submit, which is the magnifying glass. We can increase that. Let's go ahead and increase that to four. And you can see it's a lot thicker now. We have the color. We have the background of the submit, so we can make that white. We can go ahead and change all of those settings. The submit border radius, we can make that round. We can go ahead and add a border to that, a box shadow, and then we have the clear setup to where we can do the size of that, which is normally right here. And then we have all of those same settings here. You have the margins, the borders, the border radius, things of that nature. You can see one of the, let's see, we did a complete one here let's go to the facebook one and you'll see that we've gone ahead and we've styled the search bar to make it look like facebook so we can type in here and then we have the clear and the submit right here that they're all customized okay so if you understand the search drop down then you're going to understand the next couple of elements which are going to be Search inline and search modal. Search inline basically just allows you to have a search bar and you can change the width of that. So you can do 100 pixels, you can do 300 pixels, whatever floats your boat, you can go ahead and add those. The, the content, you can go ahead and change the placeholder, input, all of those different ones here, you can go ahead and, and change those. Let's go ahead and put that back. And then you have your margins, your borders, things of that nature. You have the same settings here for input, submit, and clear. So those will all stay concurrent throughout all of the search. And then we have the modal here as well. So we have the same settings as the content modal and the navigation modal. Except when you click on this, it'll just be a search bar that appears there instead of a navigation or a blank space for you to write any HTML content that you have. And you can go ahead and still style those. You have the modal here. And then you can also configure the search. As long as you're familiar with this horizontal navigation at the top, this is going to be a lifesaver for you to be able to figure out what settings are for which. You have your submit, you have your clear, you have your input, all of those different settings here. Okay. So 
once we've gone ahead and gone through the searches, we'll do social. Now social is a way to have, it's basically an icon. This is a, this is basically a way to add a classic icon to your site and not just social. Um, they should have named it icon and not social just because it's, it's confusing. Um, you can go ahead and add different aspects here. Take off your, take off all of your backgrounds, things like that. Um, you can have a link here. Let's go back to the border radius, turn that off. Turn off the box shadow. And you basically have an icon. Turn off all your padding so that you just have your simple icon right here. Um, you can make this three, so you can make this a big icon if you want. And you can add as many as you want. So you can just duplicate whatever you have and you'll have them all show up here. Go ahead to the graphics section, change your graphic, you can put Twitter. Or you can even go ahead and add, um, you can go ahead and add your own image if you want to do a custom icon, you can do that as well. Or if you wanted to do a social that's not inside of the font awesome icons, you can go ahead and do that as well. You can also add a secondary graphic so when you hover over top of it, it changes this into a different graphic. So those are all the same settings. Now, if you notice, at the top it says button. Because it, because it is a button and the text is just initially turned off. Um, if, you, if you go over here, you'll see that the text is just turned off here. So it's basically a button with just a graphic turned on. So that's also how you can do it, is just have a button with a graphic turned on. Because it is a button. They're just reusing the same element. Um, I think they forgot to rename this. But they're just using the same element. And they just have different pre-configured settings. So it's very simple to use icon. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. Stat bar. Okay. So for the stat bar, uh, you can go ahead and use that inside of the content, the header, and the footer. You can select different settings. So right now we have font size and direction one and right. So if we do up, then it'll be up like this. If we do down, it'll go down. Left goes left, right goes right. You can change the width and the height of this. So if you want it to be fatter, you can do that. And then you also have your background settings here. So those are all of your different options as well. The offset trigger is a control that you can custom uh, control. Basically, let me give you an example. If you set it to 90%, when the bar is 90% from the top of the screen in your browser, that's when the stat bar will be triggered. So if it's 90% from the top of the screen. So if it was set to 10%, it would trigger when it was 10% from the browser window. So the larger percentages will trigger the um, step bar sooner and the smaller numbers will take it so that once it gets nearer to the top, it will then trigger. So right now it's at 50%. So when, it tr when you're scrolling and the stat bars are right about here, that's when it will trigger. When you select 10% and your stat bar is right around here, then it will go ahead and trigger. So those that's something to look out for. 100% means it'll trigger all the way down at the bottom. And then if you do 75%, it'll trigger right around when you're when you scroll through here. So those that's just a different setting for the offset trigger. The margin and the padding is the same as what we've been mentioning before. You can go ahead and add padding here and you'll see those different options show up. We have the border, the border radius, which is already there. So the border radius is just like this. Uh, and then we have the box shadow as well. 
So let's go ahead and configure some of the bar settings. Let's turn off this. So the bar settings. Inside of the bar settings, you can control the length right here. So this is basically your percentage that you're going to have. You have the border radius, so you can change that. You can make it so that it is uh, the bottom right and the top right are curved, so it's kind of a bullet shape. And then you also have your box shadow as well. For the label, you can make the label be turned on or off. You can have it be custom text. So you could say, um, you know, 300 packages delivered, something like that. You can have it at the start, so it'll be left aligned, center aligned, or right aligned. And then you have the background, so you can make that transparent if you want, or you can make that a completely different background altogether. Let's make this transparent. And then we can always do the always show. So it'll just basically always show um, if we want it to always be visible. Uh, by default, the label is hidden and it's gonna fade in when you to match the animation whenever you scroll down the screen. But if you want it to always be there, you just have to turn on always show. Let's see, we have all the label dimensions and positions. So we could do the dimensions of it, we could do um, let's see 20 pixels so you can always change these dimensions here uh, it's most likely best to keep it at auto same with the height you could do the um, the x and y axis you can go ahead and move those up and down and then you also have the padding as well you go down to text format you can change the size of the text so if you want it to be completely huge you can do that as well. And then we have all of our textiles, so you can change the color, font size, font weight, things of that nature. All of those different items. Then of course you have the customize, which is the ID class element in CSS. A lot of functionality with the stats bar. It's a great, I love how they went ahead and made it so you can customize every single aspect of that. Let's go ahead and move on to text. Text is basically simple. It's just where you can add any text for your website, for your content. You have all of your text here. You're able to edit this in rich text mode. So you can go ahead and add links, change colors, bullet text, things of that nature. You have your max width and max height. And then I'm going to show you columns. So let's copy this and paste that in here. So we have all of this column, all of this right here, but we don't want it to be this long and we kind of want to break it up for people to be able to um, not get us tired when they read. So if we check text columns, this will split it into two, almost even, as you can see. I mean, there, it's going to do its best. Um, so it's going to split it into two columns here. You can go ahead and also increase the maximum amount of columns down here at the bottom so that you can go ahead and make it so that it spans over more than one column or you can have it over two, three, four columns, things, things of that nature. So those are all different options for the text that you could do with that. And then we also have down here the style and width, so minimum gap, minimum width that you want it to have uh, the minimum gap, things of that nature. So you can change that. So let's go to 100. And we can see that the gap is bigger. And we have this here. We can always do um, the margins. So we have to set the margins for the text and the padding as well. So we can actually add padding here. And you'll see that. Border, border radius, border shadow, box shadow, those are all the same as what we've been discussing. Uh, text format, you can go in and change all of the text fonts. I would suggest creating a body font format underneath of your templates and assigning it to this. 
That way, if you ever need to change your body font, you can go ahead and do that globally. And then, of course, we have our font size. Text style, so we can change our text color, as well as text shadow. Those are all the different elements for that. Okay, video. So we have two options here, video embed, or we can do a video player. Video embed is basically if you want to embed a YouTube video into your website. You can go ahead and navigate over to youtube.com uh, and you can go ahead and take something, I don't know, let's take a video. And I'm going to go ahead and find the, I'm going to go ahead and find the embed code. So we're going to go ahead and share this. Click on embed. Copy this frame that they've given us. And paste this into the embed code. It would just be that easy. Uh, if you're going to do a custom video, you just click player and type in your source code, so .mp4, and then you upload your poster, which is basically the 1920 by 1080 image that people will see before clicking on your video to play it. You can go ahead and preload all of your content. You can display your function so you can make it so that it's muted. It loops. Um, it can autoplay. It can show no controls, things of that nature. And you have all of these settings for your buttons your time progress. So all of those, if you see down here, you have, um, well, if, there's all those settings for there if you wanna go ahead and do all that. The margin controls for the padding, for the controls, the border, all of those different options are there as well. And you can go ahead and change the frame. So you can do a fixed height and it will just fill in the height or you can do aspect ratio, so it fills it in completely. 16.943, the width and max height, mix width and max width, you can do that as well. And then you have the frame margins, borders, radius, padding, and shadow. And the last one we have is widget area. So on the widgets, you go under navigate under appearance and then widgets we have all of these widget areas that we can make we can also create new ones by going over to the sidebar and clicking over on sidebars and then add in a new one you can do that uh, but right now we have the main sidebar with all of our functions here and we have our main sidebar here so we can go ahead and control that control the font size of everything the margin areas, the paddings, things of that nature. This is great if you want to, and I'll show you an example of how I'm working with it. If you, basically we have a site where we have all of our hours of operation right here. And I didn't want to go ahead and, and put those and copy and paste it everywhere. And I wanted to be able to make one change in one place and then have this change everywhere. So basically what I did was created a new sidebar called hours of operation. Let's add the sidebar. Let's go back to our widgets. And we have this over here. You can enter your text and you can do your hours of operation just like this. Now, once you've gone ahead and you've refreshed your builder, we're able to go ahead and insert those hours of operations inside of our website wherever we want and have it be able to be changed anywhere we need it to be. This is similar to global blocks. So if you create a section and you make a global block out of it, then you can go ahead and do this. Um, but prior to global blocks, I was using the sidebar and widgets to do just the same thing. Um, I didn't need to have a global block there for all of that to function. It was just it just worked for me for the for the widgets. All right. So now that we've gone through all of the V2 elements, we are not going to go through the classic elements because that's basically 
a, a dumbed down version of everything that's been there. Some el classic elements are not in the V2 elements, such as authors or block grid, call out, um, the cards aren't there either, and a few other ones aren't there as well, such as, like, if you have third parties there, they're going to be classic. You can also, uh, the classic promos are there, and then prompts. So I'm sure they're working on revising all of these classics to be V2 elements, so they have one of each. But for now, if you aren't able to use a V2 element, or they don't have the V2 element available for you, you'll have to go ahead and use classic. Which uh, isn't a bad thing, because I know that a lot of some people were needing to do maps, and there's no way to add map markers inside of the new V2 element. But if you go to the classic maps, then you can go ahead and add those map markers. So that may be a case where you have to use the classic versus the V2. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will be happy to answer them. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.